Hi there, this is another preamble video about coordinate systems. In this one I'll talk about the different coordinate systems that we can use in 1D, 2D, and in 3 dimension or dimensions for position and motion. There are many coordinate systems that we can use and learn about but here I'll talk about the most common, the, the common ones that are taught in schools and colleges. For 1D, things are very simple. Because position and motion is only in the one direction or along a straight line, we can only use one type of coordinate system and it is called the Cartesian coordinate system. Suppose that on this straight line here we have a an origin 0 and at some point say xn there is an object a. We can say that the position of this object a is basically at xn. However, you'll notice that there is a distance that this object is at from the origin. If we say the distance is s, we can, we can calculate s as a difference between xn and the origin which happens to be 0, therefore the distance itself is xn. Except for the fact that if I now shift the origin, that is if I draw the line or the x-axis backwards towards the negative x, and if I say that some point x or negative x1 is the origin instead of 0 then the distance traveled will be to negative x1 so s will change to being xn minus negative x1 which will be simply xn plus x1 and that's another method of stating the position of a could be from could be say at distance s from the origin which in this case could be either 0 or it could be from negative x1 and that's the most common system used for 1D position and motion. For 2D things start to get a little more interesting. There are two ways to demonstrate position and motion in 2D. The first one is the Cartesian system and if I draw a plane which is what 2D position motion is in is in two dimensions so there's your x and y dimensions and suppose there lies an object A at this point if I were to project this point on the x-axis I would get the x-coordinate let's say xn and if I were to do the same project the point on the y-axis I would get the y-coordinate of the object and this is all there is to the Cartesian system you would say the position of A is at xn and yn and that is the simplest way in 2D to state the position and motion of an object the second way to do it is by using again in 2D is by using a system known as the polar coordinate system. Let's draw that plane again and I'll demonstrate to you what it is. So here's the object again, A, at some point. Now if I were to draw a line from the origin to that object, what I have done is immediately I've created a distance, S, that this object is, is at. What would this distance, S, be equal to? Remember the projection from the previous slide and you'll notice that S forms a right angle triangle with the X and Y uh, coordinates of that object A. So let me draw that triangle again and this is your YN and this is your XN and this is your S. And from Pythagorean theorem you know that S is equal to the under root of xn squared plus yn squared. 
now that we know S, let's go back to this plane. Notice that there are two angles. One from the x-axis to S, let's call that theta x, and one from the y-axis to S, let's call that theta y. Notice that when I add up the two angles, they equal 90 degrees, meaning theta x plus theta y is equal to 90 degrees. And this is the second polar way of stating position. We would say that the position of A is some distance S, that distance, but at some angle, theta x. Theta x would be from the x-axis. Or we can say it's some distance S at some angle theta y, which would be from the y-axis. Suppose if you were given s theta x or s theta y, how would you go about calculating xn and yn? It's pretty simple. xn would be equal to s multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta x. And yn would be equal to s multiplied by the sine of the angle theta y. Also, once you get xn, you can go back to this formula here and reverse calculate it for yn. So there are many ways to do it. This is the polar coordinate for 2D. Now we can move on to 3D coordinate systems. For 3D, there are three types of coordinate systems which we can use. The first one, the easiest one, it has common, it has some commonalities with the uh, 2D cor uh, the corresponding system for 2D, the Cartesian coordinate system, and this one is exactly what you think it is. If I were to draw the 3D space with my x, y, and z axes, and I suppose that there's this point at which there's an object A. And if I were to project that point onto the xy plane and project it further to the x and y axes, just like 2D, I immediately have xn and yn, which are the x and y coordinates of the object. And now if I were to project this point over to the xz plane, I can project it further to the z axis and get my third coordinate. And that's basically how you would state the position of A in 3D Cartesian coordinate system. That position is at Xn, Yn, and Zn. And that is the simplest way to do it in 3D. The next way to do it for 3D is to use a system known as the cylindrical coordinate system. And here's how it works. Let me draw that 3D space again. With the X, Y, and Z coordinates, or axes. And here's your point where lies the object A. Now, as before with the polar coordinate systems for 2D, if I were to draw a straight line here, what I have done is I have drawn a distance. Here we can call it the radius r of that object's position at any point in 3D space. Now if I drop or project this point as before to the xy plane, instead of further projecting it onto the axes, I can draw another line from the center to that point and that would also be r. But this has an angle from the x-axis. Let's call that angle theta. And what I've done here by projecting this point onto the xy plane is I've created another distance from the xy plane. Let's call that h. So in cylindrical coordinate systems we can state that the position of the object A is at some radius r with some angle theta from the x-axis axis and some at, at some height h from the xy plane. More commonly 
particularly in engineering and scientific and mathematic texts, you will find the following nomenclature. Instead of r, theta, and h, it will say that the object is at some radius r with some azimuthal angle phi, which is the reference angle from a reference axis, for our case x, and at some height z. So they might call h z. And this itself tells you that this distance here, z, is from that plane there. If it were y, then you know that that angle is from the z-axis, and the distance, because it's in the y direction, that it's from the xz plane. In our case, that's not that's not the point. And that's how you would uh, portray the position of an object A in cylindrical coordinates. Now, what would you use? Where would you use cylindrical coordinates in life? It turns out there are some very fantastic uses for cylindrical coordinate systems. For example, let's say you have an aircraft engine. And there's your inlet fan. And you have some component at that location A, say. A very good way to describe the location of that component A with respect to the very front of the engine which would be our reference is use the front face of the engine and the engine axis itself and the way we would do it is first of all we would project that point A onto the front face so if I were to draw the front face looking toward the back that's your center line right there going through the screen and here's your point being projected onto that plane the front, the front face and you have that radius R now this radius R is at some angle that small angle there from the top dead center or the north axis and let's call that phi and as you'll notice that here while I'm projecting I've created this distance and we'll call that z so that component is effectively at some radius r at some azimuth phi and at some height z and that's how you would use cylindrical coordinate systems as an example the third and last most common 3D position and motion coordinate system is the spherical coordinate system and this is how one would use it or this is how it is we have the x y and z axes and that familiar point at which the object lies a now as before I'm going to draw a straight line and create that radius r and again I'm going to draw as before project that point onto the XY plane and draw that I'm going to use a different color here to draw a line and denote that angle which we'll call Phi actually this time we'll call it Theta and using yet another color what I'll do is I'm going to project that point on this time on the Z Y plane there and I can actually draw a line from the center to that point which forms a, th a second angle from the Z axis this one will call Phi so using just the radius and two angles we have completely defined the position of this point A and we can we can say that that position is at some radius r, some azimuthal angle theta from one reference axis, and some other angle phi from another axis. It is pretty obvious where you would use a spherical coordinate system in geodesics and geography. For example, if I were to draw the Earth with its equator on both sides, if it were visible 
and I'll draw the center of the earth, that point there and I'm going to draw the prime meridian as well I'm going to have a reference axis, uh, two reference axes one going straight up from the center of the earth through the north pole the north pole axis and the second axis from the center of the earth to the point where the prime meridian and the equator meet remember we need two axes because we need two angles from those axes now if I were to have some point here on the surface of the earth what I would do is I would change colors first and I'm going to project that point first onto the equator and if I draw a line from the center of the earth I have that angle there that angle there that one which in our case in the case of geography is known as the longitude and secondly I will change colors again and now project the point onto the prime meridian and now if I draw the line again I have that angle there which is that angle there and for geography or in geography we call that the latitude and this of course here that radius that I have drawn let me change colors back that radius here because this point is on the surface of the earth this is simply the radius of the earth so I can state that that point A on the earth is at some radius E which depends firstly on the radius of the earth now if the point is on top of a mountain I can have some height Z so it's RE plus um, Z whatever Z may be it could be zero at some longitude that would be from the prime meridian and at some latitude that would be from the equator so this is how this is how and where spherical system or a spherical coordinate system is used for planets and rocky bodies that have a spherical symmetry about two axes in this one in this video we have learned about the most common systems used in two one two and three d coordinate systems uh, we can use them in a variety of ways you must take care though that when you're converting from one to the other that you use the correct mathematics and correct angles because you can easily get them confused in this case for example and if you use the wrong angle you're bound to get the wrong calculated side and you might calculate xn for example and consider it to be yn and your whole calculation will be wrong so please pay attention to what you're doing and use your numbers carefully thank you for watching Bye-bye.